All right, so all of you guys out there, I know we're young, and sometimes we like get into with our parents and stuff, but hey, you gotta remember that your parents are sacrificing so much for you to live the life that you're having right now, right? And of course, shit's gonna happen. Your family, we all fight and stuff. But at the end of the day, go thank your mom. Go hug your mom. I mean, the most rewarding thing that out of all of this has been able to retire my mom. And she don't gotta work no more, doing nails, like smelling these chemicals all day. And it's like a laborious ass job. So now she's just chilling. So I just, when I'm here, she fly her out and we go have fun and goes on these little adventures with us. She'll be at World Dance. I'm gonna bring her on stage and uh, maybe we'll have her do a little cameo in the Boba Top. So <laughs> nice. shout out my mom. I love you. Yeah. I love you. As I got older, my dad would just kind of like tell me, like, you know, you got to go to these places that people aren't willing to go to. Because, like, places like L.A., yeah, there's a lot of opportunity here, but it's so established. You know what I mean? So if you go back to a place like Vietnam where things don't exist yet, you know what I mean? So you have to have the courage to want to do that. And, like, a quote that always stuck out in my mind is, like, you got to be willing to do what other people won't so that you can do what other people can't later. Does that make sense? So makes sense. You have to be able to live your life like other people won't so that you can live your life like other people can't. Meaning like being um, you know, brave enough and, and have the courage you know, to step outside your comfort zone and do the things that other people don't, won't do. Because everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. But who's willing to actually put in the work to get it? That's the difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I, I'm not the smartest person, I'm not the, but I will outwork anybody. Yes. And I'm, I'm very confident yeah. in that, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's a mentality that, you know, I think I've gotten from my dad and some of the mentors that I've had in, yes. in my life. So at this point, my dad's like, dude, come back to Vietnam and stuff. So I'm like, all right, so I go. And I, maybe like uh, in 2012, 2013, I would go like two, three times a year. And I just started seeing like all this growth. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like, you know, there's, you know, they... For me, I would always think about nightclubs and stuff, kind of. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. like, because then, like, that's where I was so used to. But they didn't have the clubs like we had here. I was like, dude, dad, what if we did something like a hotel? And he was kind of like looking at me like, he doesn't have any experience in like F&B or hospitality. That's not his like industry, you know? He was like, you know, why don't you go back and uh, go see if you can go work at a hotel? So I was like, okay, let me think about that. So I'm kind of working at Hennessy still. And I was like, my dad's like, you don't you know, necessarily need the money. You're still making money from us promoting clubs. I was still uh, you know, getting paid from Hennessy. He's like, dude, go work. At a, just go intern at a hotel. And I was like, intern? I was like, to me, you know, at the time, like, oh, that's like a step down, you know, da 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 da. But sometimes you have to take a step down to move forward, mm -hmm. right? So my dad put things into perspective for me, and he's just like, dude, if you're really serious about this, then you have to be willing to do what other people want. Mm -hmm. So at 30 years old, I went back as an intern, wow. unpaid intern. Right? Wow. So, and, and that was probably one of the, the coolest things that I think really like helped me like grow. I mean, 30 years old as an intern and in Hollywood, I was working at the, the W Hollywood. So the, the W Hollywood used to have uh, Dre's on top and that was one of my accounts for Hennessy. So I was used to going every Wednesday, popping like thousand, two thousand dollars of like Hennessy a night to coming down and now interning, right? My brother and I. So we go and intern and it's funny because I would run into the girls that wore the drays. Like, oh shit, is there a Hennessy event tonight? I'm like, no, I'm actually here to pick up your dirty towels. And they're like, what? They're like stressing their head like, what are you doing? You know, and like, yeah. dude, it was the most humbling thing ever. You know what I mean? Especially being in LA where like, you kind of got to keep up this like, your facade, image and the facade yeah. and like, get to play that game and stuff, you know? And like, and I was, we were working in housekeeping. They called it styling department because that make it sound cooler, but it was housekeeping. We were like cleaning toilets, okay. moving like, yeah. dirty sheets and like uh, redoing the bedspread and everything so you know we did it for seven months and um, I called it uh, the 30 year old intern and we uh, I wrote about it on a behind the hustle nice. and it was it was something that I was really proud of because I wanted to let people know like it's okay to like go back and learn and like don't be afraid to learn like, you should never be afraid to learn fast forward uh, it's 2014 and my dad's like dude come back to Vietnam and I'm like I might as well like, what else do I have to lose you know what I mean? Like everything here in LA was kind of like, I, I, I gave up a good life for the opportunity to go chase a great life. Mm. You know, and like, I mean, dude, I had it pretty good in LA. You know what I mean? Like, I loved it out here. And it's still amazing. It's so great to be able to come back and just see so many familiar faces and seeing people continuing to do their thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, but yeah, so I went to Vietnam in 2014 with like, wasn't sure what I was gonna do yet. We went out there and, you know, I'm very fortunate that, you know, my dad is, believes in our vision and our dream. Yeah. And he's willing to invest in it. 
you know so the partnership is I do the sales and marketing my brother does the um, finance and operations I have another partner named Cyrus mm -hmm. who owns Lock and Key um, he's also on the operations side he has the most experience out of all of us oh, and then my okay. dad's our investor and he just makes sure we don't fuck it up that's awesome Looking back at it, like working on a team and like kind of saying what I missed about being on the dance team is like really it's a company, right? Yeah. Like just like our organization. I mean, it's an organization. It's a group that with a common goal, right? Working together to achieve something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what a business is. Mm -hmm. That's what a dance crew is about, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of similarities, meaning like you know you're learning how to work with people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everyone has different personalities. Everybody has different like goals and like different motivation. But like you got to figure out what those people are looking for so that you can use that to kind of like help them become the better person. Motivate. Like motivate them. Like I mean you as a mentor, like you know, um, you've helped so many people become a better version of themselves. Not just as a dancer, but as a human being. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like for us, now I'm in a position where I can kind of do the same. Like all my staff, like they're like young. They're like 22, 23, 24. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So they don't have much life experience yet, but you know, for me, you know, I can relate to them because, you know, uh, you know, I used to be a young kid like that, you know, and being able to share that, it's crazy. I'm not even young anymore. You're <laughs> an old girl. <laughs> I feel young, though. I feel You're young. You're still young, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, do they see you as, like, because I can't imagine, like, you coming into work and you're my boss. Yeah. Right? You have a lot what of fun. So, okay, like? so my brother and I, we're like good cop, bad cop, okay. you know? So, for me, I'm like the fun guy, right? So, for me, I really focus on company culture. So what is that like? You know, every company has its own culture, but you know we're really kind of like um, uh, proactive about creating. Like I want to create a fun atmosphere. You know what I mean? Like for me, it's like if my staff and you know even like for dancing, if you're not having a good time, how are you going to make other people have a good time? True. You know what I mean? You can't give what you don't have, mm. right? If I'm not happy, I can't make you happy, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day, my goal is like if I know if I can take care of my staff, they'll take care of our guests. So for me, it's a little bit different because like in Vietnam, everyone's just focused on the guests all the time. So they don't even care about their staff in a sense, right? Oh. But it's kind of like the reverse. And I've learned and I've realized, especially in hospitality, because you're dealing with people. It's not like I'm making a product and then, you know, I'm not in interacting with the end user. But here it's like, I am kind of like the product and part of the experience. So you're, in, you're interacting directly with, with your guests. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to create this atmosphere where, you know, people enjoy going to work. People, you know, want to be there. People are, uh, you know, doing something that they love. And like, it's just really cool to be in a position now to be able to kind of give that to somebody else and, and that experience and, and things like that. So tying back to dance, it's, it's really kind of the same. We had a basically a talent show for Skylight. Nice. We had people rapping in yeah. Vietnamese, and they're rapping about our spot. We're trying to make it our theme song now. Okay. Okay. We had people like playing guitar and singing. We had people dancing. Did you dance? And then I danced for the first time in like seven years. Oh! And I did um, I did the Rashawn Patterson one for me, uh, guys piece from Urban Effects. Nice. Uh, Jafar and KJ choreograph. Oh, nice. So yeah. it's something that I don't know. I think for whatever reason, this a piece that I, it's one of my favorite pieces ever. So were they geeking out? Yo, they were flipping out because they'd never seen. Because it's like a smooth dance, yeah. kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I performed and like they were just like they. It took them a second to react because they're like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" And and you know, it, it was fun. Man, I missed that feeling, dude. I missed yeah. that feeling. Yeah. And I was so happy I did it because like at first I was kind of second guessing myself. I'm like, why am I scared right now? Yeah. I gotta remember, I gotta always step outside my comfort zone. I have to remind myself that all the time. Yeah. And I always want to make sure that I'm not comfortable because if you're comfortable, you're not growing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're outside your comfort zone is when you're really growing. So I always want to encourage people to step outside your comfort zone. The things that scare you, fucking go do. You know what I mean? Because on the other side of fear is where like, you know, these feelings and like growth is. Nice. You know, so you know speaking of yes then i see him doing a ted talk in oh, vietnam yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I did i did that? so there's a university in uh in uh vietnam it's a british university it's like one of the nicest i think most prestigious universities in vietnam mm -hmm. so they actually hit me up and they're like hey we're doing our first tedx talk and i did the first one on mentorship and oh. the importance of how mentors have helped me so all of you guys out there if you don't have a mentor like you got to like model your life and see the people that you know, kind of uh, have the um, the achievements, the happiness, the success, those things that you want in life or whatever, and see what, what they do, study that. Like, I study success. You know what I mean? Like, the people that I see who are doing things that I wish I could do, mm -hmm. I study, how do they do that? What do they do? Mm -hmm. Because you'll, you'll find there's a lot of things that are like in common. And what are those common things? And then you, you practice that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like, so for me, 
you know, the mentors have really, really helped me just kind of like, you know, why learn all this stuff when I can have somebody kind of like guide me and kind of like automatically I'm like a few steps ahead already. You know, like the mentors they have so much knowledge and they're willing to share it with you, you know what I mean? So take advantage of that. So when you guys see it, Anna, like, dude, come be my mentor, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but yeah, the mentor thing is, is, is really big, uh, big for me because I wouldn't be where I am uh, without all these people who like, you know, either believed in me, supported in me, yeah. yeah, you know, spoke to me and like kind of just helped me and like kind of navigate through life, yeah. you know, and like, I mean, I never thought I would be living in Vietnam, let alone for real owning a rooftop beach club and like for doing real. hotels and like I'm about for to real. doing charity events, working with the UN real soon. That's crazy, so, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. so you, you still did hashtag lunch bag. So we brought about. hashtag lunch. Yeah. So if you guys don't know what hashtag lunch bag, I mean it's in 150 cities around the world now. So hashtag lunch bag is a nonprofit organization that started off with a group of friends who went out one day and just made sandwiches. China just wanted to spread love and like make other people happy and things like that. Like and they went out to Skid Row here in LA. Oh. Well, I think the first time they did, it, they did it at um, Children's Hospital. Okay. But it's evolved. And like now we do it in Los Angeles. We actually did it in San Diego as well. Um, and it's something that happens the last Sunday of every month. And it's just a group of people getting together, making lunches. And like we have like you know nice notes and stuff inside just to kind of like lift people's spirits and stuff. And it's just like a good time. And then automatically you go and you give it out. So I'm making this lunch and like I give it to you. You smile. I see how happy you are. And it gives me kind of like this sense of like uh, uh, happiness too, right? And so it's like, and then we use social media as a platform to kind of like, you know, spread the word. So now it's like all around the world. So we brought it to Vietnam and we've been doing it for nearly three years in Vietnam now. But it's evolved a little bit in Vietnam. So now we're going into communities where like less fortunate, like pagodas and things like that. And um, I'm on the tourism board. I'm the vice chairman of Visit Nhachan. So, yeah, it's doing some crazy stuff. Wow, so, Tony. Totally it's, uh, it's exciting. And, and we're doing that. And we're utilizing the, the members, the hotels and stuff like that to we have a fund. And we go into these communities and we basically provide rice, um, cooking oil, water, um, uh, you know, other kind of food and stuff like that. And then also we spend time teaching English to some of the kids, whether they're at orphanages, or just interacting with the kids so that they're meeting different people, you know what yeah. I mean, and being exposed to different cultures and stuff. And then we've been rebuilding homes. Wow. And the, the homes thing is crazy. I mean, dude, wow. they're literally living in like, like, like a metal tin, like metal, metal foil house. Like, it's the craziest thing. You know what I mean? Oh. So going and seeing this, and like, dude, like, you know, coming from LA and then going to Vietnam, I mean, it's total 180. Yeah. And then just, I have so much more appreciation for like, you know, all these little things, all the stuff that I thought was so important when I lived in LA and I got so caught up in all the, and all like the materialistic stuff, you know what I mean? And like, it happens, you know? But coming here, like you just put things into perspective. Like, you know, for us, it's, 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 it's a little bit different now. And like, we're not, I remember when I was younger, I wanted to have the nice like Louis Vuitton, you know, belt and all this stuff. Nah, I don't even care, you know what I mean? Because like now you're seeing people who have, who haven't left anything and they're so happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like, you know, we get caught up with all the social media. And like at the end of the day, you're seeing people's highlights. You know what yes. I mean? Like, you're seeing the highlight reel, yo. Yes. Like all that stuff, but people don't realize, like, yo, I used to drive up and down San Diego to LA. I would sleep in my car on the side of the road. You know what I mean? I'd be cra crashing on couches all day. Um, I mean, you know, you don't, people don't see the struggle. And I think because of social media, people want instant success. I'm telling you, I've been in this shit for 12 years, right? Yeah, that's 12 a long years. Time. So, yeah. like, I love this shit. And, like, you know, I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in and, and I've had so many people who've just helped me and like believed in me, including yourself and stuff. So I always want to say thank you Aww, for that. Yay. Yeah. Because Aww. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know where I'm going. I'm getting don't. a little emotional right now. <laughs> it's <Sorry>. okay. <laughs> we are we are all proud of Tony. Like I mean, not just because he's done things, but who he is. I realize now that at the end of the day, I have to remember that the most things that there's two parts in life. One I've learned is achievement, and then one is fulfillment, happiness, Ooh. right? So everyone always kind of chases, obviously, achievement. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, I want to make this much money. I want to become CEO. I want to have my own company. I want this, that, blah, blah, blah. These are more like tangible things. But at the end of the day, this side is the part that really brings you fulfillment, happiness. These are kind of like intangibles, Yes. right? So I've learned that like, uh, in order for you to fulfill, because you know, there's obviously a lot of people who have money, but they're fucking, they're, they're like, Super happy, unhappy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then there's a lot of people who might have a little bit less, but they're super happy. So for me, it's like, how do I find that balance of both? You know what I mean? Because I've become 
and I think obviously our society and stuff, everyone's just so focused on here, and here, yeah, we're trained on, on, on the achievement, yeah. achievement. You got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that. That you kind of lose sight about this side, you know. And um, I've learned, like you know, what is going to give you fulfillment, mm -hmm. and it breaks down to four things. Go ahead. Right. So number one is control. So meaning, what does control mean? Like you know, if you feel like you're in control of your life, because you are, right? And you know, maybe in, when you're younger, like your parents tell, oh, you gotta be a doctor. You're, like, you're not in control, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you have control, that's gonna make you feel happier, right? The second thing is growth. You all, like growth, man, like growth is happiness. Growth is movement, you know? Growth is everything. Growth, if you're not growing, you're dying, mm -hmm. right? So always be learning. Mm -hmm. Like, cause then when you learn and you grow, that's when you feel the happiness, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I mean, that's, that's um, how I felt. Uh, third is social connection. You know, it's all the people, love, your relationships, your friends, your family, you know. And uh, the last one is, I just like went blank real quick. Um, contribution. Oh. Contribution. Okay. So doing something that is bigger than yourself, contributing, giving to others, being someone's mentor. You know what I mean? So those control, uh, growth, social connection, and contribution. Nice. Those are the four things that are going to... Uh, give to the fulfillment side of life. Yeah, man. Dude, you're amazing, bro. Amazing. It's I been cannot, a crazy journey, dude. I can never have it. I mean, okay, me and Anna, <laughs> I used to, we were like, when she was doing Body Rock, I was one of the producers of the show. I remember mean, waking up and like holding like these meetings and like we would be meeting at like Coffee Bean and all this stuff. Still and, like, do. <laughs> this is not that long ago, you know? And, and it, it's crazy how dance has given people such a huge platform. You know, and like I'm forever thankful for for what dance has done for for me, and like even for me to be able to give back for my family, my friends, and like the community and stuff. So yeah. So for people that will want to follow you, yeah. just um, tell us what your socials are. Oh, sorry. So Instagram, it's uh, at tk underscore win. That's n g u y e n. It should be like right here, right? Yes. Okay, right here, yeah. right here. <laughs> so, follow, uh, come and uh, join the journey. We're just getting started, and uh, I'm excited to see what happens next. And uh, and your hotel is called. Oh, okay. So I have a, I, we have a rooftop beach club. It's called Skylight. Uh, Skylight Nha Trang. It's a beach town in Vietnam. It's a small. It's a small beach town. Like it's four less than four hundred thousand people. Um, it's. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Three hundred days of sunshine. Uh, I'm on the tourism board, so we're always trying to get people to come out and just see it and like. You know, for us, it's about growing the destination. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending this time. And I know uh, I'll see you, you know, in the hall, walking yeah. around. All right. Bubble with friends. Yes, that was fun. Well spent. Yes. Peace.